Hey, this is Patrick Murphy Racy. I'm a Sony artisan. I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time, um, but I had to wait for this one and this one to come into existence first. Um, the purpose of this video is to talk about uh, the very best lenses that Sony makes and which ones are the best for what you might want to do with it. Um, and this would include both sports and nature photography, although the, the nature photography stuff is at this end of the counter. Um, the first lens I'm going to talk about might surprise some of you. Uh, it's the least expensive lens out here. Uh, it only costs $598. It's the 85 1.8 uh, lens. Um, even though it's a very inexpensive lens, um, it does have a focus hold button on it and uh, the AFMF switch, which is cool. Um, but it's kind of a little bit of an unsung hero, in my opinion. It's a very, very sharp lens. It's extremely fast. Some friends of mine that shoot sports with both the 85G and the 85GM will say that this one's much faster autofocus. Um, I haven't really found that, but um, it's plenty sharp. Um, is it as sharp as the, the 85 14 G Master? No, but are you gonna be able to tell the difference? Some of you will, some of you won't. Probably most of you wouldn't. Um, so this is a great lens. Now, what's it good for? Uh, I've got, kind of made a list of stuff here. It's great for basketball, volleyball, wrestling, judo, karate, gymnastics, portraits, uh, boxing. Um, this is a fantastic lens because it's reasonably priced. It's extremely fast. It lets in a lot of light. Um, 1.8 is actually a third of a stop faster than f2. So if you're comparing this to um, the kit lenses that typically come with the cameras, uh, those are like four, five to five, six lenses. And so you go five, six, four, 2.8, f2, and then 1.8, which is a, a third of a stop. So you're talking about four and a third stops faster than the little zoom that comes with your camera. So the 8518, for those of you that are shooting like the a7 III, even the a7R2, uh, a7 II, the original a7, um, uh, and especially the crop bodies, um, because the on the crop body, this is a, a 135 millimeter 1.8, which is a fantastic lens to do sports with. So just don't count this one out. Uh, but I love this lens a lot. It's really lightweight. It's small, compact, um, fits in, in like a lot of bags and stuff. And if you use it all day long, like at a gymnastics tournament or something like that, it's, it's really nice. Um, so you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get really sharp, great results from shooting sports with a Sony body. The next one is one of my favorites. Um, this is the 85 1.4 G Master lens. It differs greatly um, from the 85 1.8 in a lot of ways. Um, for one thing, there's only nine blades in the diaphragm, in the aperture uh, diaphragm in this. There's 11 in this one. So your bokeh or your, your out of focus kind of look is going to be greatly improved. It's going to be more organic here where this is going to be a little more busy, um, a little more disturbing uh, background, if you will. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. But this one is, is primo. Um, the um, the 85 G Master has uh, one XA element, uh, which means extreme aspheric. It's a very, very expensive chunk of glass. There's also three additional ED glasses, so low dispersion glass inside. This lens is nano-coated so that the um, there's very, very rare chance for you to have reflections happening in between the elements of glass that are inside this lens. This lens is not nano-coated. So again, big difference in price, but also big difference in quality and, and features. Um, this has the uh, linear AF motor. Uh, it also has a fo focus hold button. And for those of you that are shooting video, it also has this little cool switch here, which is you can de-click your aperture ring. So you can have this be completely fluid and slow it's very nice if you're a video shooter. Um, if you're uh, doing a lot of video work, I would not recommend the 8518G. It, it's, um, the autofocus is very quick, but it's also kind of herky-jerky. Um, it's killer for stills, but not as good for video. This one's awesome for video. And last year, but not least, this uh, the 85G Master has really, really good sealing for uh, weather resistance. So if you get caught out in the rain or uh, it's very moist or you're working in a pool, something like that with swimming, um, this lens is gonna kinda do a little bit better for you. Um, 
This is a 77 uh, millimeter filter. This is a 67. So again, everything about this lens is smaller, lighter, more compact, less expensive. This one's 599. This one is uh, 1798. Um, the next lens I'm going to talk about is um, one of the most recent ones that I own, um, and it's the 135G Master. Um, people are absolutely raving about this lens. Um, this lens is a phenomenally sharp lens. It's super, super fast autofocus. It is a deadly tool in a sports photographer's hands. Um, this lens has the ability to, in almost no light, to track accurately uh, not just an athlete in action, but also do uh, full-on real-time tracking where even the uh, keeping the eyes sharp and, and things like that. It's a phenomenal lens. It's heavy. It's big. It's bulky. Um, it also has the D-click, so this is going to be a really good one for videographers that want to have a really, really beautiful bokeh background. Like This is a great interview lens if you've got room to back up. Uh, this will turn any nasty, gross library background into a beautiful watercolor um, just by putting it on the front of the camera. Um, uh, the 135-18 is, is purported to be one of the sharpest lenses ever made uh, in a full-frame 35mm. This is according to uh, LensRentals.com, to our buddy Roger over there. Um, crazy doctor guy, but he really knows his stuff about optics. Um, I just can't say enough good things about this this uh, this lens. Um, it's a lot of money. This one is uh, eighteen hundred ninety eight dollars, but it has an extreme aspherical element in it. It has a super uh, low dispersion glass, and then multiple ED elements. Uh, focus hold button. It's nano coated. Um, and all these lenses have what's called a fluorine coating on the front element, which resists kind of fingerprints and scratches. It's kind of like your your iPad or your iPhone screen, how they resist scratching. That's what the fluorine kind of element uh, uh, coating does. It's, it's really useful. Um, it has an 11 bladed diaphragm, just like the 8514 G Master. Um, and it has what's called an XD linear AF motor, um, which is mighty fast. This is a, a linear tracking motor. It's going back and forth in a straight line instead of going uh, in a helicoid motion like all the old legacy lenses with Canon and Nikon and so on and so forth. So this is going to be a super accurate, fast, blazing fast, ultra sharp lens. Um, if I'm honest, it's probably one of the sharpest lenses up here, including all these big boys over here. So the 135 is a phenomenal lens. Um, really, really nice. Okay, moving on, we're going to go to... Um, um, a kind of another group of lenses, which are these here. Um, these lenses are going to be useful. This is the 7200-2.8 G Master, the 100-400 G Master. Um, I'm putting these two to kind of together. Um, this is good for full court basketball, volleyball, wrestling, judo, karate, boxing, gymnastics. It's great for portraits. It's great for kids t-ball. Um, touch football with little kids, uh, peewee, soccer, Peewee baseball, um, it's very versatile. Uh, zooms by, the, by just their nature are wonderful because you can go from 70 millimeter to you know, 200 millimeter just in a flick of, a, of your fingers. Um, you can follow action really well with it. <clears throat> this lens has um, what's called an FLE element in it where it's got a floating element of glass that's controlled by a second motor so that no matter where you're focused, the lens is automatically realigning the rear elements of glass wherever the front landed to give perfect edge-to-edge -edge sharpness. It's a really phenomenal thing, and virtually all these lenses have this, and it allows these lenses to focus much closer than their counterparts in the legacy brands. Um, so um, the 7200 is kind of like the basic, this is your meat and potatoes lens for somebody that says, you know, I really want to shoot sports. What do I get? This is what you get because um, it lets you shoot so many different things. Um, so <clears throat> this lens has an XA element, two aspheric elements, and four elements of um, uh, glass that are super ED. It has the 11 bladed uh, rounded diaphragm for bokeh. It has optical steady shot built in. These do not have that. So if you put this on a camera that doesn't have built in uh, in, uh, in in body image stabilization, 
uh, you're going to be jerking around. This one is going to settle things down and allow you to do great video work. Um, Nano coated fluorine coating on the front element. Uh, it's weather sealed. Um, it's a very, very nice um, uh, lens. It has three focus hole buttons, um, removable tripod ring. Um, this is kind of borrowed from Nikon. It's a really nice feature where you can, if you don't want to have this thing on there, you can just do this quick release thing and it just comes off. It's really a really beautiful way to, that's awesome. I, I love that feature because you, you don't always want that on there. It's kind of heavy and gets in the way sometimes. Um, and just a few more things. There's the access window, which is kind of cool. If you're a nature photographer, this would be very important for you. You can just open this little window and you can adjust your polarizing filter. Um, in many legacy brand lenses like this, you have to take the lens shade off completely, put your polarizing filter on, and then turn it to where you want, and then tape, make a, a filter out of tape because the, the, uh, the lens shade won't fit back on there again uh, because of the thickness and the width of the filter. So this is a kind of a nice feature. It's really, really cool. Um, uh, and let's see what else. Yes, this is the first uh, lens in the Sony lineup that will accept both the 1.4 and the 2X teleconverter. So I use this lens a ton with a 1.4 uh, converter attached, which gives me a 100 to 300 millimeter f4. And this is a killer second lens for me for football, for on goal. Um, it lets me shoot basketball full court. I can do so many things with it. It's just a really versatile lens. So the ability to use teleconverters is crucial because this um, can also become a 140 to 400 millimeter 5.6 zoom. Um, and you get to keep all the features like real-time tracking, IAF, facial, rec facial uh, uh, recognition, autofocus, all that stuff's gonna still work. So it's pretty cool. Uh, this lens is 25.98 um, and uh, it's a phenomenal lens. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna kind of group these away because now we're gonna move into something else because what we're doing is now we're leaving the 200 millimeter focal length. This next lens is the 100 to 400 millimeter uh, G Master lens. Now this lens all of a sudden can get you truly covering field sports. Um, field sports take up an enormous amount of room, especially soccer. Um, so soccer field is much larger than a football field. People don't often know that. Hockey, um, so you can do um, baseball and you can actually shoot the outfielders in baseball and softball. Uh, lacrosse, field hockey, uh, track and field, it's great for. Golf, it's amazing. Auto racing, it's nice and light. You can carry it all day and at the track and not, not kill yourself. It's a great air-to-air -air lens doing aviation photography. Um, and uh, there's some use for this for like astrophotography. If you're shooting the moon, um, wildlife photography, this is one of the kind of the first entry level lenses where you can go to the zoo and really make some beautiful images of animals uh, with, with animal IAF now um, in a lot of our cameras. Um, so just on the gobbledygook on the 100 to 400 zoom, there are, there's one super low dispersion element. There's two low dispersion elements fluorine coating on the front element, nano coatings throughout, the FLE system, so it's gonna have the two autofocus motors, the rear one realigning the rear element to wherever you focus the front to, weather sealing, uh, direct drive AF linear motor, which is dang fast. This is a super fast autofocus lens, it's amazing. Um, there's something called a zoom tension adjuster, which is kind of cool. If you are um, working on a tripod, and you're trying to do something here, um, what will happen is the gravity will kind of cause the lens to drop. And so you can actually change this tension and make it tight. Now it won't come down. So it's a nice, it's a nice feature, especially if you do a lot of macro work, working on flowers. In most, in the legacy brands, you'd never think about using a 100 to 400 zoom as a macro lens, but with a, a little um, uh, extension tube, this can, becomes an, a really, really versatile lens. You can just shoot flowers and even bugs and stuff. It's kind of cool. Okay, um, let's see. There are three different autofocus hold buttons, just like on the 7200, um, and nine bladed diaphragm. Now you might say, why isn't there 11? There's 11 on all these others, but this is only nine. I think part of the reason is it's just a slower lens. At 5.6, you're not gonna have that beautiful blowout bokeh 
uh, that you're going to have with a 4028 or even a 600, you know, 6.3. So I don't think they felt the need to put 11 blades in there. Uh, I don't think it would make that much difference. Um, let's see. Um, of course, the 1.4 and the 2X teleconverter will also work on this. And you'd be shocked at how good this lens is with a 1.4 converter attached, which makes it now an F8 lens indoors. I shot indoor track in New York City um, and was just blown away with the A9 at how well it would track and give me IAF. Um, and an indoor track meet is quite amazing. Uh, this one does have optical steady shot built in. So again, if you're using a camera without IBIS, it will, it will give you steady uh, look. And um, this is $2,498, um, so 2,500 bucks basically. There's one quick story I'm going to tell uh, about this lens in particular. I, um, the first time I got this lens, I went to a Clemson football game, and it was during the season that uh, they won the national championship, which is kind of cool. And I brought with me um, a Canon 500mm f4 uh, lens with a MC11 uh, adapter. And so I had the choice of using either this lens or the 500mm f4 lens uh, that Canon made because none of these were made yet. And I got over there and I was messing around pregame, uh, just shooting players and just, you know, doing reps and stuff as they were practicing before the game. And I realized that I had a decision to make. And the decision was, do I go for the gorgeous blowout out of focus background that a 500 millimeter F4 would give me? Or do I want to have every stinking thing sharp that I point the camera at? And I left the 504 in the bag. And this is kind of a transitional moment for me as a Sony photographer because I, I realized that even the lenses that I was typically used to using, even though this was this is much slower than I preferred, it was still better shooting with less light than it was using a fast lens made by somebody else. And so I just... Um, I nicknamed this lens the street sweeper at that game because when I was editing the images afterwards, I could not believe that I had not missed hardly anything. I mean, I was on every play. I was just, you know, with the A9 in particular at 20 frames a second, it just blows your mind what your takes look like. And so it was hard for me because I liked the big glass. I've been humping big glass for 30 years and you don't want to go to a game with just this thing because it doesn't make you look like a real photographer, but I used this until these others were made because it was just so good. The lens was so sharp and it was so fast and it worked so well with the A9 at 20 frames. It was a really neat, neat thing. So, yep, the Street Sweeper. The next lens I'm going to talk about just came out with the 600GM on the same day, uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, this was a real surprise. Um, I did not think Sony would make this focal length uh, so soon. I thought they'd make straight primes uh, before this. So I'm really glad because this lens, uh, these lenses are not going to be purchased by very many people. Very few people are going to be able to justify the cost of these. This one, however, is easily justifiable, I think, by many people that are very serious about photography, uh, whether they're nature shooters or sports photographers. So pretty excited about this lens. First of all, um, the 150 to 600 millimeter focal length is hot. It's a very, very great it's a great focal length range. And both Tamron and Sigma have been exploiting this. They've had those lenses for a long, long time. They're very good, but they're not sealed like this one. Um, so this lens, when you zoom it, um, you can see what's happening. There's like this whole section of the lens is moving out. This lens is entirely internal focus and internal zoom. So when you zoom this lens, there's nothing happening on the outside. The lens is not changing its shape or its length or its size at all. Um, having a lens that's completely sealed is really, really good because it will avoid dust coming in over time, which it just does. Um, and it's gonna give way better weather, weather sealing. So, you know, this lens in particular is gonna be a fantastic wildlife lens, um, especially if you're walking and shooting wildlife. If you're in the back of a Jeep and a safari in Africa, you know, you can, you know, do well with just by anything because they'll get you right up in the animals. But if you're actually walking around in the woods or in the mountains and you're trying to shoot 
uh, animals in their natural habitat and you're having to hike in and hike out, uh, this is a phenomenal value at 2000 bucks. It's $1,998. Um, there's one thing I want to point out. Uh, it's not exactly a pain point, but it's something that you just need to be aware of. This is a 200 to 600 millimeter uh, lens. The aperture ranges from uh, 5.6 to 6.3. The first question I had uh, when, I, when, it, when it was announced is when does it switch? Like how long does it stay at, uh, at 5.6? And the answer is right around 325 millimeter. So from 200 millimeter to about 325 millimeter, it's a 5.6 lens. Once you hit about 325, it goes to 6.3 and stays there all the way to 600. So some hardcore sports photographers will consider this lens to be, in fact, a 300 to 600, 6.3 zoom, and, and it is. But to get the added range is just a benefit. Um, but to get the weather sealing, um, to get the detachable hood, to get this form factor, a 95 millimeter um, a filter, you can actually put filters in this lens, which you really, it's very difficult to do with these because you have to use drop-ins. You can front filter this thing uh, very easily. Um, this lens is $1,998, and I tell you, my prediction is that Sony will be sold out of these things over and over and over again. I just don't think that they realize what they made. I really don't. I think this is going to be the hottest selling lens in the telephoto range they've ever had. Um, I think they pot will potentially sell more of these than 7200s even. I really think so. So I'm, I'm really impressed with this lens, especially at its price point. It is an extreme value. Um, you just cannot miss uh, to get a piece of glass like this with all this new technology packed in it. Uh, you know, you pair this with A9, you can shoot birds in flight all day long and get amazing results and not kill yourself, you know, doing the up and down thing all the time. Um, I want to just hit the, the, there's a lot of glass in this lens. There are a total of five low dispersion ED elements. There's one aspherical element. All the um, chunks of glass inside are nano coated. It has the fluorine coating on the front element like all the others. Um, it is, um, it is what's called direct drive supersonic wave motor. So this is the same motor technology that is in the big boys and it is super fast. It's a very, very quick, fast focusing lens. Um, and remember, if you put this on an A6500 or an A6300 or um, whatever else they make, A6000, you're going to have a 300 millimeter to 900 millimeter zoom, which is just awesome. Um, it really is. Um, it has an 11 bladed uh, diaphragm, um, and it has something called um, linear response manual focus. Now, what does that mean, linear response manual focus? All these lenses focus by wire. So just like in your BMW car, when you hit the gas pedal, you're not hitting a pedal that's mechanically hooked up with a cable and springs to the engine and you're changing a carburetor setting. It's drive by wire. What Sony has done is they've figured out a way to electronically duplicate what a helicoid focusing lens feels like. So usually when you buy an autofocus lens, typically um, they're going to autofocus really well because that's what they're primarily designed for, but they're not going to do great in manual focus. And um, this, these three lenses in particular are going to focus extremely well in manual and they're going to give you great results and a great feel. So I'm actually excited about that because I do a lot of manually focusing still. Uh, just a more sort of organic, um, more natural feel. Uh, this one also has a focus range limiter, which can be really good for certain sporting events where, or if you're trying not to get on a tree line and if you're shooting birds in flight and they keep flying by woods, you can set it where it'll, it'll fly only on this side of the woods or whatever. That's a kind of a cool thing. And strangely enough, uh, this lens also will take the 1.4 and the 2x teleconverter. Um, so you can actually make this a 1200 millimeter lens, um, a legit you know, field of view of 1200 millimeter. Um, so I wanted to just tell a story again about um, another Canon 504 story actually. I went to an air show and I shot this air show with a, an A6300 and a, a 500 millimeter f4L lens. 
with a MC11 adapter. And I had the time of my life. It was so much fun to shoot the Blue Angels and shoot all the trick planes. And I mean, it was there was Beechcraft out there. There was all kinds of stuff. It was really exciting. And I, I really injured myself. You can't shoot an air show, planes flying above you in the sky. You can't do that with a tripod, and you can't do it with a monopod. And so I handheld this 500 f4. Um, it was basically a 700 millimeter lens for the entire length of like a three and a half hour air show. And I injured my shoulder and I, you know, I, I probably should have gone to the doctor, but I was in pain. I couldn't sleep on this side for about three months. And I didn't have that pain completely disappear for about nine months. You can really injure yourself carrying lenses that are heavy and bulky and large and, um, you know, using a monopod is a great idea, but in an air show, this would be so much better. It would make so much more sense because you could, you could follow focus for a lot longer and not be in pain and not injure yourself. So uh, this thing at an air show would be just killer. Uh, I think that uh, lens rentals will rent this thing all the time to people that can't maybe buy it, they can't justify buying it, but if they're gonna go do something special like go on safari or go to an air show or go to a PGA golf tournament you know, this is something that would be really worth the money to rent and stay behind the ropes and still work, work out you're doing. These last two lenses are in a league of their own. They really are. Um, these lenses are for birders, um, people who are shooting polar bears in Alaska, uh, puffins in Labrador, extremely tight sports photographers, people who really want to shoot tight, and that's a part of their style or, or what's required of them to do a job, an assignment. Um, so. You're going to see a lot of these at the Olympics. You'll see tons of these, though. Um, my guess is for every 10 of these, uh, Sony's going to sell. They might sell one of these. It's very rare to need a 600. The 600 is amazing, though. It's an unbelievably beautiful. Um, the result you get is phenomenal. It's, it's unlike anything else. Um, and when you can combine that speed also with the focal length of a true 600 millimeter, it's 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 killer. Um, so first we're going to talk about the Foreigner GM. Um, this is uh, my own copy. I'm so happy to have this. I can't even tell you. In fact, all these lenses are mine except for this one and this one. And I'm hoping to, hoping to buy this one uh, next year. But uh, the Foreigner GM uh, has three different fluorite elements. It has one low dispersion element. It's nano-coated. has the fluorine coating on the front element. It has optical steady shot built into it, which is significant. Uh, a lot of these lenses don't, and um, it's great. So if you use an older camera, you can still use, you know, for video especially, it's very useful. Um, this lens weighs 6.4 pounds. 6.4 pounds is obscenely lightweight for a 428. It's just, it's awesome. And I just love, um, I love going to sporting events and you know you end up working next to people and they'll say, how do you like that Sony stuff? And I just hand them my monopod and say, here, lift this real quick. And they go, whoa, because they're waiting for this huge weight. And uh, weight's all in my rear view mirror, man. I love it. A lot of friends of mine that are shooting sports, especially soccer, are actually using this lens without a monopod. Now, I don't think I would go there I wouldn't do that, but I can understand why they want to. If they have to run them back and forth out in the field and, you know, if they're doing all the ad stuff and they got to go out for marketing, I understand that. But for me, I'm going to be using that. But it's actually possible to use a 4 2 8 now without a, without a monopod. Pretty amazing. Um, these two lenses have what's called an XD linear AF motor, um, and it is a super fast Ferrari-like speed experience. It's, uh, I shouldn't say Ferrari, I should say Tesla because it's drive-by-wire and it's all electric. But phenomenal lens, it's so sharp. You don't get the degradation that you got with legacy glass often when you added teleconverters to the lens. Sometimes you'd see this huge drop in quality when you added a 1.4 or 2X, and I don't see that. In fact, I can't really tell. I have to look in photo mechanic at what, what millimeter it was shot at in order to know if, if I used a 1.4 or not when I look at images from this lens. So it's, it's, it's pretty sweet. Um, these lenses have completely different weight distribution than any other legacy lens that have come before them. So usually what you have is a huge weight in the front element. And what Sony did is they moved 
the optical, they changed the entire optical design because it's for mirrorless instead of DSLR. And so all the big weight in the lens is right in the middle, right over um, the tripod uh, ring, which is great. Uh, it's very well balanced. Um, you know, it takes some getting used to um, because this lens won't automatically flip element down when you're walking across the field. It'll actually go element up. And if it's raining, not good. So you want to be careful with that. But um, it's just a very, it's a much easier lens to work with and move around, especially if you're panning. There's great advantages to the lighter weight and the dis for different weight distribution of, of where the weight is inside the lens. Uh, so I really like that a lot. Um, it has an 11 bladed uh, aperture diaphragm. And of course it takes the 1.4 and the 2X converter. And with the 1.4, it's a 560 millimeter F4. And with the 2X, it's an 805.6. And remember that on the A9 and almost all the other cameras too, you can, um, you can task a button on the lens. You know, you can make this button, the focus hold button, you can make that a, an automatic zoom on sensor. You just press it and all of a sudden you'll get 1.5X. So it's kind of a built-in electronic uh, teleconverter, if you will. It's very powerful. I use it all the time on my 4028. Uh, sometimes there's not time to change and add a 1.4. You want to get a little tighter on something, pop fly to right field, and then you just click that. You just click this ring right here, and it'll take you right there. So, of all these lenses, though, only the um, the six and the four primes have this multifunction ring, and you can make that ring do different things, just like you can make these buttons to all do different things as well. Um, so last and not least is the most awesome, the biggest one. I, mean, I just, the 600 has always been my favorite focal length uh, since I started shooting football. It will blow the backgrounds to smithereens. Um, and believe it or not, even though it's F4, it will do it better than a 4028 will wide open. Um, so my preference has always been towards the 6. This one has three different fluorite elements in it. There are two ED elements. It's nano-coated throughout, fluorine on the front element. Now here's the crazy thing, um, 6.7 pounds. So this lens weighs three-tenths of a pound more than a 428, and it's a 600 F4. That's crazy. I have no idea how they pulled that off, um, but I'm glad they did. Uh, it has what's called an uh, XD linear motor. That stands for extreme dynamic. Um, so the autofocus motors in here are otherworldly. It's like, it's like a Tesla at the drag strip. It just, it embarrasses everything else. It really does. Um, they also have, um, uh, this one's got what's called a de-clicked uh, tripod collar. So you can actually take the clicks, you can take that out. You can just throw a switch and, and remove it, which is kind of cool. Um, I, I thought that was a neat feature. 11-bladed um, uh, diaphragm. The 1.4 and the 2X, of course, still work. Um, and uh, it's a real joy to use the 600 with um, a 1.4. That's how I primarily shoot football. It gives you an 860 millimeter 5.6. And it's, you know, that's an awesome way to work. So for me, you know, this season, I'm hoping to use 600 F4 and a 1.4. And then um, probably the 7200-2.8 with a 1.4 or the 100-400, you know, as my second body. That works out really well. Um, it has the focus range limiter. Um, and uh, it has something very unique. It has high speed AF all the way up to F22. So this lens, you can like do crazy stuff with depth of field if you wanted to, um, but it will still autofocus. Um, accurately at f22 which is kind of crazy now it's only the a9 by the way the other cameras cannot achieve this but with the a9 with firmware 5.0 added to the camera um, it becomes more fully functional with uh, this lens and uh, i don't think i mentioned but the the um, the 600 f4 is um, twelve thousand nine hundred ninety eight dollars so 13 grand versus twelve thousand so you have um 13,000, 12,000, 2,000, um, and uh, then on down. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk a little bit about this lens versus this lens. And this is probably what a lot of you are trying to figure out. 
because we're talking about lots of money and uh, I get it because I have to spend the same money that you do. The first comparison I'm going to do is between the 7200 uh, f4G lens and the 7200 um, G Master lens. Big difference. First of all, age. Um, the 7200 f4 I think came out in 2014, which in Sony years was like 30 years ago. Um, Sony years are like dog years. You got to figure seven to ten years per each you know year. Um, so it's kind of older technology. It's a very sharp lens. It's a good lens. It's super lightweight. I like it a lot. But when they made the 7200 G Master, I immediately bought this and sold my 7200 f4. The 7200 f4 is a reasonably priced lens, though. It's less than half the cost of the G Master version, and it's a really, really accomplished, good lens. There's one huge problem with it for me, and that is that it does not take the 1.4 and the 2x converters. So the 7200 f4 is locked forever into that focal length, and that's it. You can't change the field of view ever. So you're kind of stuck. Um, you can't expand it by buying you know, 500 bucks and you buy another teleconverter and now you double it or you do it 1.4x or whatever. So for that reason, I don't think that, um, you know, I just think that if, if you really want to be, if you're investing in the Sony system and you're serious about photography, personally, I think the G Master is worth the money because it allows you to expand in the future where the 7200 F4G does not because um, you're kind of locked in there. It's a good lens, folks is fast, but not as fast as this, not as accurate as this. Um, so uh, it's still good, but it's just not, it's not on this level. All right, the next one might be the most important review that I do, like comparison thing, because this is what everybody's talking about. This lens has everybody talking. It's such a cool focal length. A lot of people bought this lens already and love it, and they're trying to figure out, should I buy that too, or should I sell this and buy that, or should I keep what I have? It's not an easy answer, and there's not one answer for everybody. Um, so I'll go through a couple things. Number one, the 100 to 400 is a phenomenally sharp lens. It is a G Master lens. It's not a G lens. So in the lineup of Sony, in Sony's eyes, when they built this, it's a G Master. It's the top of the line. Nothing better. So they spared no expense for any part of this thing. It's, it's a wicked, wicked little machine, okay? glass on down the motors and all the rest of it. Um, one thing that is very uh, important to remember is this is a, a 4.5 to 5.6 lens. So this lens is faster. It lets in a little bit more light than this one does. So if you're going and you're shooting all the time under lights, you know, this one's going to give you just a little bit more um, exposure um, for the focal length. Now you're not going to have 600 millimeter either. So, but for me, um, you know, this lens is, um, it's a great lens. It's much lighter, smaller, and more compact than this is. This is heavy by comparison, honestly, to this. So um, I really am, this is my own copy of the, of the 100 to 400. Um, because I own the 400 to 8 and plan to buy the 600 GM, I'm actually not planning on buying the 200 to 600. But I'm weird. I'm an oddball because I shoot sports and I love shooting tight. So I don't think that um, my not buying it should be a reason for you not to buy it. I think most people that are interested in buying these lenses should probably buy this one, um, uh, especially when you figure the cost. Um, so, but between the two, um, if this lens had, had started at, if it was a 5.6 all the way through, I'd go this way every time. But um, I like static aperture zooms, even though this isn't one. Um, I just think I get more use out of this. But that decision's based on having these also and this. So for my purposes, I'm going to hold with the 100 to 400. But this is, I think they're going to sell the whiz out of these. Um, this is a fantastic lens. And the shocking thing about the 200 to 600 G lens is that it's not 3,500 bucks or $4,000. I think they would have sold plenty of them if they had almost doubled the price. Um, so at 1998, uh, my God, it's a good deal. Um, so, you know, which one should you buy? You probably should buy this one, um, especially if you're shooting birds uh, or if you're shooting field sports. Uh, if you're not shooting field sports and you're shooting things that are closer, um, 
auto racing on short tracks and stuff like that, third of a mile, half mile ovals, you know, this might be a little overkill. Um, but if you're doing birds and, and animals and if you're shooting, um, you know, in daylight all the time, this is, this is awesome. For golf, get out of here. Like, even though I'm not planning on buying this lens, I will probably borrow one from Sony to cover golf tournaments because it just doesn't get any better than this for, you know, dragging around for four days on a golf course in 100 degrees. So I love them both. Um, I might even buy them both, but for right now, I got to look at buying this, and that's a big chunk of change. So uh, for now, I'm not going to buy this one, but I really recommend it. Um, last but not least, let's say you don't own either one of these and you're considering it. Um, the difference between these lenses um, is pretty phenomenal. And there's one thing I want to point out. When you get into this lens, if you, if you buy the lens and you don't, you don't buy the teleconverters, you're kind of crazy because why wouldn't you? They're so cheap compared to the glass that you bought already. So anybody that's buying a 400 GM or a 600 GM, you really should at least buy the 1.4, but you really ought to buy both converters because it just expands the uh, usability of the lens. It gives you more flexibility of what you can shoot. And um, in a way, I think it, it's a good investment in what you already spent. Um, just a little bit more you can get, you know, uh, this lens you get an 800.56 and, uh, you know, a, a 560 f4. Um, which brings me to an interesting point. Um, which lens is faster, um, a 400.28 or a 600.4? f4? Dumb question, right? Of course, the 428 lets in twice as much light as the 600 f4. However, <laughs> I love to point this out to people. When you take a 428 and you put the 1.4 converter on it, it becomes a 560 millimeter, 560 millimeter f4. This is a 600 f4. You literally get 40 extra millimeters without costing you any aperture. In this one way, I feel like the 600 f4 is actually a little faster than the 428. Now I'm not talking about focus speed, I'm talking about lens transmission through the lens into the body's sensor. So I have always been a huge fan of the 600 f4, but I've had a lifetime of shooting American football. Um, and the, you know, the, the, sometimes they're so far away, especially if you're covering one team, you know, they're on the opposite side of the field, I gotta stay with them coming at me on offense all the time. This has been my life for a long, long time. And so for me, you know, between the two, uh, the 600 f4 is worth it. It really is worth owning. For most even very serious professional sports photographers, the 428 is just more versatile. It's, it, you know, you can shoot this uh, down court basketball. You can shoot the other end of the basketball court with this. You can't really do that with this. I mean, you could, but it's not gonna work and you're not gonna be able to see what's happening. Uh, great for coaches, but you can put a 1.4 on this and get the same field of view as the six, but nah. I mean, so versatility, 428. If you're wanting to become a sports photographer and you're very serious about it, the 428 is the lens. If you have a four, you don't need a three. If you have a four, you don't need a six. If you have a four, you don't need a five. Um, the four is sort of the do everything lens. Um, even in politics, if you're a political shooter in DC, you know, this is extremely versatile. Um, and, you know, this lens uh, can shoot field sports, it can shoot volleyball, it can shoot indoors, outdoors, whatever. It lets in so much light. It's just a phenomenal way to work. Um, the 428 is by far the most universal lens, but I prefer this one. <laughs> and I probably always will. Um, every um, 100 millimeter increase of focal length past 300 millimeter is logarithmic. So when you go from 300 millimeter to 400 millimeter, it's not a little bit of a change, it's a massive change. Uh, and you, your ability to selectively focus and have only one thing sharp is increased greatly, logarithmically. So when you go from 300 to 400, you get this huge jump. When you go from 400 to 600, it is a, it's night and day. It's another galaxy of bokeh. Um, so if you are just in love with blown out backgrounds, complicated backgrounds turned into complete mush, into watercolors. This is a great way to go. Um, 
Now, if you're shooting senior portraits, a lot of people are figuring out how useful telephotos are and even super, super telephotos for senior shoots. Um, now, this will be a great seller. Lots of people who shoot seniors are going to buy this lens and they're going to do great with it. Um, but if you really want to be the person in town that's giving the little bit extra and that no one can make that picture but you, 428, awesome. Um, so again, this is the universal long glass that's always been that way. It probably always will be that way. But if you can do both, the 6 and the 4, it's amazing. If you can only do one or the other, you really got to pick what you do. If you're a birder, you're only going to buy this lens and that's it. And there's, if you buy this lens and you're a bird photographer, you're going to always wish you'd bought the six. I guarantee it. Um, if you shoot, you know, safari and stuff and you want to do polar bears and grizzly bears in Alaska, that's your friend right there. Because you really won't have to crop very much, probably. Um, but both of these lenses are awesome. They're just phenomenal. It's so much fun to just create eye candy with every picture you make. And that's what these do. They really do. These do too to some extent, but not like these two. Um, so, um, anyway, I don't know if I've caused confusion by talking so long and so much about all these lenses, but I've been wanting to do this video for a very long time. The first, um, sort of four or five years of my being a Sony artisan, all I talked about was adapted glass. Well, guess what? We don't have to use adapted glass anymore. That's over. And Sony has seen fit to crank out these beautiful lenses uh, with packed with new technology that we didn't even think to ask for. I couldn't be happier to be a Sony shooter and I couldn't be happier to shoot these long lenses especially. Um, and, uh, but I hope it's been helpful. And as always, if you haven't figured it out, I actually respond to um, comments on YouTube. So if you have a question for me, ask it because there might be 15 other people that want to know the same thing you want to know but maybe they're not going to send me the question. So please, uh, I want it to be a communication, you know, two-way street. I'm um, putting this out there. Um, last, you know, I am a Sony artisan. Sony didn't pay me to, to make this video. I don't get paid to make these videos. Um, so I would always appreciate if you'd follow me, uh, if you'd, you know, you follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and, and uh, but especially on YouTube. And uh, it helps me just with, um, you know, getting gear like this, getting a hold of it. And last, I just want to thank Sony for being so cool. This, I think there's only four of these in the country. And uh, they sent me one. I just did it today, shot a few images with it, and I'm going to ship it back to the next person that needs it. So I appreciate that very much. Um, but that's it for me. I hope this has been helpful and not confusing. If you have questions or comments, please put them below. I am Pat Murphy Racy, Sony Artisan, saying thanks for watching. And I mean thanks for watching. This is a long one.